Shut up and sit down. All right, guys, it's been a long time since I actually sat down and painted something. It must have been about a month and a half. Um, so here is the harp. Also, this is Big Mech's Workshop Paint Studio. I'm Dodge. I was looking forward to painting this one for quite some time, but uh, didn't get around to it. It kept getting pushed further and further back. And uh, bearing in mind, I've not painted anything a month in a month and a half. Um, I forgot some of my paint skills. I kept making some amateur mistakes on this. So firstly, I've painted it in a black primer by Vallejo, and now I'm going to use Games Workshop's Nagaroth Knight. What I did by uh, working on this one was break the model up into parts as the harp itself is half of the model and this demon is also the other half. You can also quarter it so the body for the harp is a quarter and the dress is also its own part. So we're going to separate it and work on those parts like that. Now we're going to start highlighting that with a violet by scale 75 and uh, my glazing techniques were a little bit off. I was putting um can i say i was uh making the brush strokes a little bit too long um don't need to start from as far back and that was putting quite a few streaks on this model so you will hear me uh criticizing my own work quite a bit in this video but um i need to get back on track then i decided to mix some null oil with lamia medium and uh put some nice long strokes through here and i think this is what made it streaky i'd not used lamia medium in ages or lamia medium sorry and um, yeah, I ended up with a pretty dry, scabby effect, which is not something I used to get. So whatever I was doing before was working better. Um, need to get back into the swing of this one. Now we're going to use Scale 75 Chink Orange, which is one of the new ones, which uh, I thought was a bit of a weird colour to start with the flesh, but I wanted the flesh on the model to be warm on the underneath. Um, to save myself time, what I could have done was literally paint the entire body Mon Fang Brown, so it's easier to paint over the black. But eventually I do get there with the uh, colour tones on the skin. Now we have a uh, very, very orange looking corpse, or body, and uh, we're going to use several layers of Reclam Flesh Shade, about three coats. Uh, just taking, uh, it's semi watered down, so it's like 50-50, and we're just building it up bit by bit. We want to sit in those recesses and we're going to warm this orange colour up to more of a flesh tone. It looks like uh, the Tango Man at the moment. And while that wash is drying, I'm going to go back to the Scale 75's Violet and start following the raised areas of the dress again. Also, what didn't help this paint job at all was the insane heat that we've had in England at the moment. It's been absolutely brutal. So trying to glaze, the watered down paint is just evaporating off your brush, drying on the tip and uh, clogging that up as well. So uh, painting at the moment has been a bit of a pain. Now we're going to use Scale 75 Blacker Brown. I believe this is from the leather set. And... Uh, I was having a good day glazing here actually, uh, just building up the thigh muscle there and basically going over most of the thighs and all the raised muscle areas. We're going to leave the weird orange tone or the chink orange just showing through uh, where the Reclam flesh shades in the recesses. That's going to add a, a nice warm tone to the underneath of it all. Now to uh, tone these two colours together we're going to use Army Painter Red Tone instead of Caraber Crimson because I find Caraber Crimson's a little bit too red. It's like uh, more of a child play block red whereas Army Painter's a little bit darker. And as you can see just layering and glazing those up uh, allows the chink orange to show through the underneath but it warms up all that skin as well and we're just blending those together now with the Army Painter Strong Tone. And uh, I remembered my uh, previous mistake when it came to uh, painting over black. So I'm going to use Gorthor Brown by Games Workshop on the Demon. The reason we do this is if you want to paint a light colour over black, just put a brown down first, as brown gives much better coverage over black, but then it's so easy to put a light colour over a brown. Next up, we're going to use Scale 75's Blacker Brown Mix 50-50 with Sandal Brown. And we're going to be using that on the skin for the uh, harp guy as well. 
as you can see this paint is very very thin because i'm using a wet palette and i'm just glazing up those raised areas it's barely anything on the brush it's basically colored water if you keep it thin enough and the weather's just about right you can uh, get through a lot of this in a day on a hot day but if it's too hot it just it doesn't work it just keeps drying on your brush and you can see we've got some nice texture there on the skin as well and the base coat for the harp itself for the metallics we're going to use old copper by scale 75 as uh, you probably noticed over the uh, past year we've really started using a lot more scale 75 colors and the scale 75 metallics give an excellent coverage as uh, well as they don't fall apart when you add water to them uh, whereas games workshop you end up with a little puddle of pigment now we're going to use victorian brass by scale 75 and we're basically going to work the top two thirds of the model and this is glazing again as well uh, slowly building those up over the edges and it's going to give a nice subtle transition from one color to another as it's supposed to be the same part but the harp itself has a lot of uh, divots and uh, dints in it where it's uh, been knocked around a bit so we want to highlight the areas around those leaving the other color showing underneath Now we're going to add Model Air Metallic Gold into the Victorian Brass. This is going to start toning the colour away from the brass and warm colours to more of a uh, silvery tone. And eventually this will give a nice effect, although the colour at the moment is uh, considerably warmer than I uh, wanted it to be. But if you use a nice bright colour and uh, you tone it down with some washers, the uh, brightness disappears but the colour variation stays there and that's the effect I really wanted for this. Now we're going to add some Model Air Metallic Steel into that mix as well. You know, we're doing the same thing, just working up to the, the top sections and it's so thin that you uh, it doesn't matter if you go over a bit you don't want to. Because you know, it takes several layers to really build it up anyway. So you can really muck about working on those textures around the uh, sides and the top bringing out all those details on the harp itself. Now I'm going to add Drushy Violet and Null Oil together and I'm really going to water this down. This is to just give it a darker, ever so slightly purple hue. It's going to take away from that uh, bright, warm palette we've got there. It's also going to subtly make it match the rest of the model. And we're going to do several layers of this just to tone all those metallics together that we've done now for the skin for the uh, demon we're going to use light grey by model air which is sort of a, uh, a bluish grey as I didn't want to go straight for a purple and um, yeah as you can see it's going to cover those browns very easily and we can just start building up from this as a base layer it's best to do this in multiple coats guys as the um, flesh is not got too many um, deep recesses in it so you want to keep these nice and smooth so you don't clog up what detail there is for the hair I'm going to start with Incubi Darkness by Games Workshop wanted something to sort of match that same palette as it's a uh, purpley looking demon and uh, We've got a greyish blue skin, so Incubi Darkness fits quite well for the hair. Um, fits in between that blue and that purple quite well. Next up, we're going to use Steel Legion Drab as the base for the loincloth. For the guy holding the harp. Well, it kind of is the harp at this point with all those tendons, but we'll get to those later on. Steel Legion Drab is always a good base for doing uh, fabrics to be honest and uh, with Games Workshop paints there's a lot of variety there where you can uh, change up to Carrick Stones or other random colours. They've got a lot in that area that go together quite well. After that we're going to use Bane Blade Brown and that's going to be the first highlight on this. Again glazing that around, just building it up nice and steady. And picking out where the light would hit the most. To, to be honest, I spent most of my time making the light come from the uh, top on this one. Um, 
just a habit more than anything sort of revert back to uh, the games workshop way of painting things most of the time once I've uh, had a break but I do intend to do a lot more glazing with a lot more fun models in the future next up is Tandalos Red by Scale 75 and you'll find me use I use this a lot for anything that's supposed to be fleshy or sore it's a very dark red but it's not like a corn red by Games Workshop which is quite a potent red it's just naturally more of a, a very reddish brown so it works well for scabs and sores after that I'm gonna add in a little bit of deep red into the Tandalos red and that's a scale 75 as well that's more of a sort of Wasdaka red somewhere between Wasdaka and corn red just add that in there and this actual scarification on his back is a uh, pretty cool it's got a lot of bumps and details where his spine and everything else is although I decided not to paint the spine separately as there's layers of muscle texture over the top of it so just bringing those out a little bit at a time with the very point of the brush after that I've decided to go back to the uh, loincloth and I'm going to use Carrick Stone by Games Workshop and really start picking up those bits a, around his uh, waist and just the very tips of anything that should be slightly brighter just to bring out the waviness of that uh, loincloth and that really does add a little something. I really do like doing cloth so I was very disappointed that uh, I sort of mucked this skirt up uh, the way that I did so so quickly like I was saying I've been out of practice uh, for a month and a half so all my skills have slipped a bit it shouldn't take long to get back on it though for the skin I decided to use a null oil as we've only used that flat base at the moment of the light grey this is just to add some depth into the model and to help bring out the um, raised areas so I can see them better for highlighting later on it also helps the model pick up on camera a little bit better Next, as I'm doing washes anyway, I've gone for an Agrax Urshade, and this is watered down. Um, it's going to be a typical one for the loincloth there. Uh, nothing too special really. Just sticking with the tricolours from Games Workshop, adding in a wash. And I'm pretty sure we'll come back to it later on uh, when I'm touching the model up and uh, just add some extra highlights in with the same colours. I'm going back to the light grey with Model Air. And I'm going to start picking out the muscle texture for the demon. I think I'm using a uh, Windsor Newton here actually. I'm not 100% sure what brush I'm using there. But yeah, uh, just starting to pick out the cheeks, the chin, all those raised areas. So the null oil is just going to sit in the recesses, but just to make sure there's no hard lines, we're going to blend it out with the previous colour that we've put on. And after that, we are on to Decay Black by Scale 75. One of the reasons for this is I didn't like the way the null oil sat in the folds of the skirt, so I decided to put Decay Black in there and uh, start feathering it out just to add a little bit more depth to the uh, purples that we've previously done. Next, uh, we're going to mix some more purples together. We're going to use Brain Eater Azura by Scale 75 mixed with Lendan Lendanis Grey, uh, which is another scale of 75, just to start bringing out that shape of the skirt a little bit more. I'm trying to get all those folds and uh, just pick, pick them out so it looks like the light is just gleaming around the top of it, around the top where a leg is, and also around the bottom where it's uh, more pronounced. Then I'm going to use a Drushi Violet to blend all that previous work together, including those uh, blacks that we put on. This is just to make the uh, transitions a little bit more subtle, and as you can tell, that's really watered down. But for some reason in this heat, those washers were just not working the way I wanted them to. I went back to the hair while all that was drying, and we're going to use Ryle and Grey and Hellhound Flesh, both by scale, <coughs> both by scale 75. I'm going to start picking out the uh, chunks of hair. Now there are, there's quite a lot of detail in this hair actually, where it folds into that braid. Um, it's quite fun to paint. 
But what I did find with this model, one of the most annoying things about it is it should have been painted in two parts, the harp and the demon, and then put together. It was a nightmare. Now we're continuing the hair, but we're just gonna add a little bit more hellhound flesh to that mix. And uh, start picking out the individual hair strands and following the tops of each of the braids. As uh, braids curve round, there'll be a raised area on it and we're gonna highlight that bit itself. to make it look more like it weaves in and out of itself. Now for the skin, I've gone for Miskatonic Grey by Scale 75. And I'm being very gentle and very sparing, but we're going to start bringing out the uh, cheeks and the forearm muscles, the fingers. Um, over everything that we previously did, just leaving a little bit of the other paint more visible. Uh, you can keep going up as high as you want with this skin to be honest as it's demon skin so it doesn't even have to look realistic so you can really muck about with a color palette now i decided that um i didn't like the dress to be honest it was very patchy in places so like an idiot i decided let's do some freehand on it even though i've not painted in so long decided to do plague brown mixed with Camouflage Green by Game Color, and they are quite thick paints naturally. Um, so probably not the best idea uh, to try and cover up those mistakes that way. But as you can see, I started working on uh, making them into diamonds. They didn't all end up perfectly diamonds, so what we're doing in this step is we're just going back to the previous purples that we've done and uh, try and sharpen those things up a little bit. Just make the edges a little bit more straight. It does add something to the model, but it kept coming out so patchy because of the heat. After that, I decided to use a Decay Metal by Scale 75, and we're going to use this on the jewellery for the demon, and also on those weird prints that it has on the dress. Um, some form of embroidery, I just thought I'd do them in a... Uh, metallic sort of look, just so it stands out from everything else. After that I'm using Army Paint a Strong Tone, which is like an Agraxa shade, it's just not as orangey, and uh, just toning down the uh, diamonds a little bit, and uh, pulling most of it towards the very bottom tip of those diamonds. This is just to add a, a little bit of shade to them and make them look like they're not just painted on like they flow with the rest of the dress. I would have used a slightly different colour I think if I uh, redid this one. Now I'm using Scale 75's black leather which is a favourite of mine. I'm going to use that for the horns and also the claw around the back which we don't really pay much attention to but it's going to be done in the uh, same way as the horns are. I thought it's a sort of a muted colour, it can fit in the purple sort of spectrum and it also works well next to the actual harp itself. Now we're going to use Arbuckle Brown, which is another scale 75, I think that one's from the leather set. We're going to start working that towards the top of all the horns. I'd say some of it we're starting about midway of uh, the horn, because we're going to put more darker colours back in just to uh, add some more movement to the horns. and bit more depth. So now what we're going to do is brush the other way with a watered down decay black by scale 75 just to make the very base of the horns a little bit more black and take some of that colour away and it also helps the transition as we're going over the other two colours uh, but it's very watered down but uh, you can see how that uh, starts to add that effect in there sort of tones the uh, reddish colours away making them more black so we've got more of a reddish black. That's the uh, joy of using watered down paints and using filters, you can get away with really weird colour combinations. After that I'm going to use Drushi Violet again, very watered down, and we're going to use that to go over the entire dress including the diamonds, we're just trying to tone those together, sort of smooth them out a little bit as the uh, paint was so thick I'm just trying to cover up those mistakes that I did make as I got so far through it and it was too late to start again. 
But luckily I have the black coach to uh, work on after this one as well, so I'm going to enjoy that one. And now we're going to use a Caribou Crimson by Games Workshop, just because in comparison to the rest of the flesh this scarification started looking a little bit flat. So I thought I'd bring it to life with a bit more of an actual reddish red colour. As Games Workshop's Caribou Crimson is quite red. Next, I mixed Arbuckle Brown with Model, model Colour Sky Grey. Um, this gives sort of a very weird pastely sort of grey red. Um, I'm using that to edge highlight the horns and in some cases just doing the very tips of them and then blending it out that way. It just gives that extra dimension, it's not too overpowering and because it's a muted colour it looks more like light is hitting something that's already shiny. Now I'm going to use Moon Scow Alchemy plus Decay Metal, um, both scale 75 colours from the Cyberpunk range I believe, no Steampunk range sorry, um, that gives a sort of a lighter silvery brown colour. I'm going to start using that to highlight what we did already with the decayed metal. So that includes all the jewellery and uh, all the embroidering or the patterns that are actually stuck onto the dress. And uh, just to tone them a little bit together, or tone them together a little bit better, I'll be using a Reclam Flesh Shade just to put a little bit of warmth so uh, they're not too cold. Uh, they do need to stand out from everything else. Also, the uh, the harp's actually got some jewellery around his neck, which I paint in the same fashion as well. As you look around this model, there's quite a lot of bits of uh, random metallic jewellery. And for the jewels, I used Arfed Jade, which is a scale of 75 colour, which I believe is from the Orc Skin Tone range, or possibly the Forest range. It's a uh, sort of turquoisey blue green and I use that for all the jewels as I thought that would uh, work quite well rather than adding any more reds as the reds uh, sort of focus towards the middle um, for uh, for the harp itself now I'm going to use Tindalos red again mixed with sky grey but I haven't mixed the paints properly I've deliberately not mixed them so there's little bits of red and little bits of white on the brush and all I'm doing here is dabbing the center what look like nerves and this way I'm getting a lot of different color transitions in a very small area. It doesn't matter if this goes on slightly thick, it just looks like gore hanging off of the nerves. And uh, we're going to build that up a little bit at a time and you can keep going and going with this and just keep changing the uh, transition and the layers. Just painting texturing basically. Now we're going to use uh, Caribou Crimson. Um, over the whole thing that's just to tone down the brighter uh, the the sky gray that's been put in there but it's also going to darken the reds as well it's going to make it look a little bit more natural and that's it's also cool if it starts to gather at the bottom it just looks it just looks a little bit more gory and uh, adds a little bit more detail to the uh, top of the harp For the jewels, all I did was uh, add a little bit of uh, orc skin flesh to the edge highlights. Then I took the orc skin flesh and added a little bit of the sky grey because, as you can probably tell in this video, sky grey has been my uh, white mix that I've been using to lighten everything up. Usually it's Reckon Rakar flesh, but I decided to change it up to fit alongside the uh, purple hue that we're working on here. And uh, again, going back in again with another Tandalos Grey and uh, Sky Grey there. Like I said before, it's not mixed properly. It's supposed to be patchy in the palette and patchy in the on the end of the brush as well. It just adds layers and layers of this detailed texture. And once you wash it down, it, uh, it works really well together. A little bit more of the uh, Arbuckle Brown just to really add some gore in there. If you wanted to, you could use uh, the effects paint uh, by Games Workshop, but I find they're a little bit too red for this job. 
Uh, it doesn't matter if you get this on the flesh either, uh, as long as you feather it out with a bit of water, so it just looks more sore. And it just builds up that nice effect, so it looks like all the nerves are being pulled out of his back. Now for the uh, string, all I did was a uh, rhinox hide, because that's quite of a red, kind of a reddish brown. There isn't much in the way of string. Anything else that was string, I painted as a sort of a gold chain or gold or silver bit of jewelry. And after that brown, I'm just going to add on a little bit of uh, corn red, just to add a, a little touch of warmth to it, uh, so it doesn't look too much like the rest of the model. And just be careful not to get it on the actual hoops that uh, hook the string on there. And after that, I basically spend most of my time touching anything up off camera, trying to get it to a, a standard I was happy with, although once I'd mucked up that dress, I just simply wasn't happy with it. Um, that could have been a lot better. Um, although I did like the paint scheme for the uh, harp himself. Um, it was an interesting way of doing the flesh. Well, as you can see, the uh, the gore sort of took off nicely. It looks like the uh, <coughs> it looks like the lights hitting the details and their lumps on there as well. The hair probably could have used a, a couple more highlights, but I was quite interested in the uh, the horn colours as well. I will probably apply those to uh, something else demonic at some point. Maybe some more slanesh stuff, as uh, we have been thinking about getting some more in the way of slanesh. Although we do have Warcry coming out soon, so maybe I'll apply it to something there. So, that's it for the video. We do have some thank yous to give out, because... Uh, Without our patrons and the support you guys give, we would not be able to do this. A massive thank you to the Oak Boys, Matt, Ludwig Hofbauer, Warren, D. Watt, Kit Lindquist, Agnes of Dawn, and Mark. Those guys are our top paying patrons. They help us buy more models for these uh, tutorials every month, and uh, they get all the early access content. So this will have been up for about a month or two before you guys even get to see it on YouTube. And uh, if you want cheap models like the Harp or any others, go check out the Outpost through our affiliate link in the description where um, you can get 15 to 20% off on all um, game supplies, including brushes, paints, and everything else as well. And they've got a really nice delivery service, and uh, we get paid a little bit in store credit for the advertisement. That's all we've got time for this uh, in this video. Um, so don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, share with your friends, and leave a comment if you've got any questions or just something to say. And we'll catch you in the next one.